What's going on guys? Welcome back to No Legs No Problem TV. You asked and I have answered. Today you're going to be meet Max. There he is right there. We're going to take a look at his van. You're going to get to meet his cat and uh, we're going to hear a little bit of his story. He's kind of an inspiring guy and so from coming from me I, I guess that means something as everybody always says that I'm inspiring, but Max has been through the ringer like I never have. So if you want to hear his story, come on. All right, hello, my name is Maximiliano Ulloa York, or just Max if you can't say that. <laughs> Um, I, I've been in a wheelchair for about eight years. In 2012, I fell off the balcony, hanging out with some friends, lost my balance, went off the, went over the edge, and just landed in a sitting position, and it went up my spine, broke my T5 vertebrae, so I'm fused three above and three below, uh, which didn't give me a core, didn't leave me with a core. So I, if I just lean over, I fall over. I'm constantly having to keep myself up, uh, but. You know, a few minutes after I hit the ground, I, I've, I've been blessed with the, with the understanding that just to move on in life, nothing's really ever bothered me, including the spinal cord injury. When I found out I couldn't move my legs and I was just laying there, I was like, oh yeah, I can't feel my legs, called the ambulance. And shortly after that, I kind of chuckled and said, <laughs> I guess we're on a new path now. And then I, ever since then, I just kept going, you know? And because I'm, because I have that type of view and mentality on things, I, I, even though I've been through a lot of rough spots, I never really let it bother me because I knew that it's not going to last. You know, pain's never going to, it's never going to last. You're always going to get a break from it at some point, whether it starts up again or not, but you're going to get a break, a breather, basically. Um, so the first year, you know, from the very beginning, I got hit hard with challenges. Um, I was in the rehab for two months. As soon as I could transfer, the insurance was like, okay, you can transfer, get them out. And I had to go home. I didn't have any family in California. I didn't have anybody at home, completely all alone. I went home alone. I didn't have a ramp on the house. Um, I could barely cook ramen noodles um, and wash my clothes. Uh, luckily, there was a maintenance guy. He would come, take my trash out, bring me noodles, cereal, and take my clothes out of the dryer. But it was a stack of old. Uh, and I was like that for two months until my brother was free from his job and, you know, I really owe my brother a lot because he completely root, uprooted his life in Virginia and moved to California just to take care of me and we went through some rough patches, some rough times because uh, um, with insurance, when you have an injury, you can't get Medicare until you've been in your injury for at least two years to, so that it's authentic, I guess, so no, no one's taking advantage of it. Which I get and I understand, and, and, and I, if it wasn't in place, there would be a lot more people taking advantage of uh, Medicare. And it's something that, you know, I'm glad that we get to bring this to the light because it's something you don't know about. Uh, obviously, who knows, this, who knows anything about what a spinal cord injury is going to bring or another uh, situation. Uh, so, that being said, I, you know, I, I, I don't make much but of my disability, so I couldn't afford to pay rent and eat properly. I was literally eating one pack of noodles, 10 cents, or what, 10 cents on where? <laughs> what are they now? <laughs> They're like a quarter a piece. So a quarter, a quarter a day is all I could afford, <laughs> 10 cents. You guys all wanted to uh, meet the cat. So he has the cat and uh, I don't know why the cat's in his shirt. I'm sure he could probably explain that. Well, when I, whenever I have to transport her from one room to another or something, I have to put her under my shirt or she'll just jump off. <laughs> 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 but this is Chill Dog. I've had her for over 10 years. I actually joined, I joined her, um, this is my girl. I joined her team. So I actually had, I, I rescued her from, uh, adopted her before my accident, and then uh, oddly, three years after I got her, I joined her team. <laughs> so, so don't think she's my mascot, I'm her mascot. <laughs> but she's a very good cat, very chill. Uh, her name is Chill Dog. Um, 
She actually has been my uh, inspiration. I basically I helped her through her recovery because she wouldn't move at the feeder and stuff. Because uh, she somebody left her at the um, shelter in a box with this uh, dangly leg, and then um, uh, Doctor Abet uh, volunteered to take the leg off, uh, and then I, I got her through there. So I you know I got her through her recovery, and then she got me through mine because she was always there. She's because of that leg missing. I don't think she liked um, socializing a lot with me. She basically I was. I was just feeding her. She was my roommate. She would sleep somewhere else. And then these later years, like as she got older, she started snuggling next to my leg. Um, primarily because I get spasms at night, and my foot will go like this, and I don't know it. And I found out that she steals pets. Like she gets by my leg and she goes like this for me to pet her, and I don't know it. <laughs> and she, so she's stealing them. Um, but she's a really cool cat. She helped me a lot through my recovery. She knew those down days when I'm just having a bad time or, you know, in the early days. She would come and like meow and like push up against me trying to distract me. So she's a very cool cat. So you had her for 10, she's a 10 year old cat. Yeah, you know, yeah, she's good. Um, you, uh, you road trip in your car. Yeah, basically I decided that nutrition was more important than a roof, a like comfortable roof. So I said, you know, I'm going to, instead of being that homeless guy around the neighborhood, I didn't want to be like, because obviously you're first, if you're homeless and you're always driving around, you're already sticking out. And then if you're a wheelchair, you stick out even more. And I didn't want to be that guy where he's like, oh, I feel sorry for this homeless guy in the wheelchair. Um, so I decided, I said, you know what? I'm not paying rent. I have a few hundred bucks in my pocket. It's enough to pay for gas from here and there. And I just, instead of sticking around town, I went on a basically two-year road trip uh, until I could get Medicare and, and such. I was fresh out of my injury. It was rough. And, and so you pretty much bumbled around the country from Cal from one end of the country in California, and you ended up in Miami? Yeah, um, well, my, my older brother lives in Miami, so in the, in the beginning, I, I was able to take Chill Dog there because I was, I was in a little yard, you know, that... This van is a is a is a complete opposite of what I was doing yeah. before. And so, I'm speaking of the van, then, so um, we'll get into more of that in a minute. I'll tell you what we'll do right now. Uh, we're going to go out and uh, and take a look at the van. And uh, you guys wanted to see what we did to it, what we had to do to it, and what it is for Max. So let's go take a look at that, and then we'll come back in in a little bit. Okay. tell you having the, this van this van was a blessing for me because I uh, I only got it for all, all together after repairs and stuff just to get it running I think I ended up spending a little under five grand total but it came with a lift the chair swivels has a bed in the back has hand controls all of it came with it I can't I could I, I, and and I and this is how I got it. I was at a gas station getting gas. I wasn't feeling good that day. I was very, this was early when I wasn't, didn't have a lot of strength. And a guy was passing my car and I said, hey, because the, the phone number on the gas pump didn't work. Hey, do you mind telling them I need help pumping gas? And he went in and said, no problem. Went in, came out. He got in his car and he was two pumps over. And then he got back out and came over to me and said, hey, I have a van. My father-in-law passed away a long time ago. And this van was, it's just been sitting there. Uh, it's only has 48,000 miles on it. It's brand new. It's top of the line for uh, 1998, because it was a workman's comp case. So it was like all the good stuff. <clears throat> nice. And I came over, I went over there, and he, uh, he sold it to me for like 2,000 bucks. Nice. Yeah. So I got lucky on this one, for sure. Uh, and, then, and that was my goal the whole time. I said, you know what? I have this, I have this dream that I want to travel and help and do stuff and, and promote jujitsu and exploring without limitations. But I said, before I can ask for help from people or ask for money, 
I want to be able to provide. Oh, I want to be able to provide the van on my own. Like it, that was my first accomplishment I wanted to do, so I wasn't just asking for stuff. And I finally did it. And now it's time to start this trip, like like I really wanted to eight years ago. Yeah. But what's good about those eight years is that I got time to really mature, understand my body, understand my limitations, understand the road. So this type of round, I mean, I did that two-year road trip, but I never left the car because I was so weak. I ate out of, I ate out of, um, you know, fast food windows the whole time. Uh, because it was just a hassle. It was so, my wheel, my wheelchair was, oops, my wheelchair was heavy. It was such a hassle to get in and out because I was such a weak state back then. I didn't get to enjoy the road. Two years I was on the road and just looked at stuff. I'd go to a park. I'd go to a park and I'd look at it. I wouldn't even get out because I wasn't. All right. Now, before he cranks this up, we haven't tested it. We know the battery's got power because all the stuff is running. But I worked on this yesterday. And I will show you guys what I worked on in a minute. But he hasn't cranked this thing up uh, without having to disconnect the battery first and forever. So we left it overnight last night. This will be the first crank up after I worked on it. So let's take a look. Here we go. And the windshield wipers yeah. work. And the windshield wipers work. I've been dodging the, I, I, you know, I, I don't have much because I, you know, I'm slowly getting, I'm slowly getting back to, to being comfortable. But, so I don't have much. So I couldn't buy a windshield wiper motor and stuff. And uh, so I've just been, if it rains, I just, I'm in my home. So I just stay there for a while. <laughs> but, the, but Neil said, you know what? I bet it's a fuse. And sure enough, there wasn't even a fuse in there. So now I can go out in the rain. Awesome, and it cranked up too. Nice. All right, so now we're around here at the front. I'm gonna show you what I worked on. We didn't film me working on it yesterday because uh, it was spitting rain, and uh, and really I just wanted to get this done for Max because I'm only gonna be here for another day or two. But uh, he has a, a Vortec V6, so he's got the same basic motor that my truck has. So here's his problem, and I, I'm assuming somewhere there used to be a coach battery or a house battery on this because see the solenoid right here? This solenoid uh, is obviously an aftermarket setup and so um, it, this has had a lot of wiring problems but this solenoid for Max to be able to run this vehicle he had to take this jumper wire right here and jump from here to here. So obviously the solenoid is bad because this side goes straight to the battery and this side right here goes to his main fuse box which is which is right down there. So I don't know what these wires go to um, at all uh, but uh, everything in the van is running so because this is bad and there's no power going through at all I just bypassed it. So I took I took his old uh, he's two old wires, and I put them together with a bolt and taped it up. This is kind of a stopgap. He's going to want something more permanent down the road. But for the moment, um, this seems to be working. The problem was, was when this was connected, he would come out and the battery would be dead every morning. So over here, there's his battery. And that battery right there starts the vehicle, but it also runs his uh, power seat that you guys saw. And it also runs the lift. So, you know, if the battery's dead, he can't even get in the van or get out of the van, for that matter, uh, if the battery goes dead. So, bypassing this solenoid uh, took care of all that. And I'm just assuming somewhere there used to be a coach battery. And I've tried to chase these wires down, and I'm not sure where they go. They go under the dash. So, I, I just bypassed the whole thing just to see if we get it to work. Because what Max was having to do... If you can imagine Max doing that, Max, show them, show them where you're, where you're, oh, right here. yeah, yeah. So Max, Max, uh, I don't have a core. Yeah, he doesn't have a core. So, so right about his uh, nipple line or so, um, Max has no, uh, has no feeling and no movement. So he was having to come around here, sitting in his chair, and try to use this jumper wire with these pliers to jump that, just so he could drive. Um, 
and uh, and now we've got that for the moment I think we've got it fixed so how about that yeah yeah it works and the windshield wiper oh, and the windshield wiper about that you don't understand it's been like I, I, I've been hesitant to, like, I started my road trip, but this is my second stop because I met Brian, my, my, my really good friend Brian Freeman's house, where uh, you guys saw him in the other videos, um, where he, he, he he's really helps me out a lot. Um, so I get to come here, have my own room. <laughs> the house is accessible because he's in the wheelchair. <laughs> but I'm here until I can get, feel comfortable with this van before I really hit the road on my own. Uh, because, you know, traveling up the, the East Coast, I, I have people and friends or places I can go. So, but when I get, like, deep in the West or up North, I don't know anyone over there. Yeah, don't worry, guys. I, I'm going to uh, teach Max how to, uh, how to find places to go out in the desert and go camp and, and hang out. So, uh, you may see him in the future, maybe at the Van Build or somewhere else. That's no promises for that, but he'll be traveling eventually. So my road trip started, I'm, I'm feel really excited now that we're getting closer on this van. And, uh, and basically what I'm doing is, I didn't get to enjoy the road trip I was on before because I was just too weak, I barely, I never left the car. For two years I only left the car to train Jiu Jitsu and that, that was it. I literally <clears throat> sat in that driver's seat for two years pretty much. I didn't pump my own gas, I called the person to pump the gas, I ate out of drive through windows and I just slept in the driver's seat because I don't feel my legs, kind of uncomfortable, but uh, I had to do it, it was a little yard, so imagine a Prius, that's what I was driving, I uh, wish I had the hatchback, because I could have slept back there, um, so it's being that I didn't really, I got the, the road trip and the, the blueprint and the map from that previous one, and all the connections and people I met. So now I get to do this road trip properly and show more videos and show what exactly I'm doing from jujitsu to exploring, to remodeling the people's homes and when we can raise enough funds. I have a contractor's license before my accident, so I have a really, especially carpentry and, and ramps. I can, I can write those up, find, my goal is to write up um, uh, bids and then find local with the money I can, I hopefully can raise uh, for to buy to. Okay, here's what happened. When I was in the hospital, this group came in and they gave me a thousand dollar check to uh, build a ramp on my house, on um, whatever route, so for uh, accessibility. But not knowing what's ahead of me, uh, being fresh into my injury only one week, I, I ended up spending it on bills because you have to keep on top of your bills, even though the medical stuff made my credit shot anyways. Um, so I learned from that uh, because I learned that someone may do that also when they when what was really needed was that ramp. I was in, isolated to that house, to my place for two months because I couldn't even leave. Um, so my goal as far as the remodeling side is to raise funds, remodel someone who's really in need of a ramp or or something to hopefully be able to build a ramp on their house using local um, uh, companies to that want to help. Uh, but that's down the line. We've got to start, you know, somewhere. Uh, so for now, basically traveling the country, uh, bringing awareness and the benefits of jujitsu for people with limitations. And also, before my accident, I was a rock climber, hiker. I, I loved to camp. I did. Ex I explored. I loved nature. I lived in San Diego. And um, I miss that. And I, I know there's people out there that are probably in the same position as me. So uh, my goal is to bring that van out to these places. And um, next year we're, we're hopefully trying to, um, to uh, organize the ice climbing trip if anyone wants to come and join us uh, in Uray, Colorado at the ice park. So things like that we're trying to do to help give opportunities for people with limitations to get out there and, and explore. Because you know, I, I, you know, I couldn't think. One of the things that was kind of heartbreaking in the beginning is like, wow, I'm never going to be able to hike from one peak to another anymore. Um, and I want to get back to that. You know, eventually in the future, maybe get a horse and still be able to do it. But yeah, that's something that I learned for myself was I had anybody that's, that's read my book, my book available on Amazon, Barnes and Noble, and other major outlets. <clears throat> I started. I started a thing called a socket list, um, and my socket list is like a bucket list. The bucket list is things that you want to do before you die. Right. My socket.
socket list, being the sockets is what my prosthetics are on, um, is things that I used to do before, yeah. see if I can still do them. Right. And there's a few things that I can't. I, can, I, can't, um, I can't walk trails anymore. So I got an electric bike and I modified it so I could be able to go out on trails. Nice. You know, that's that's something something that that not enough people understand. It's all they think about is is there's the one thing I can't do anymore. And it doesn't matter if you can't do it because you got old or your knees went bad or 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 whatever. If you concentrate on that one thing you can't do, you're gonna be miserable. You gotta find the things that you still can't do and find new things. And I think that's that's the that's the whole point, you know. Exactly. And that's exactly the message I try to give off uh, when I meet people. I say, you know what? I didn't waste my I think it was thirty four when I fell and I didn't waste my life. I was a I did parkour, rock climbing, jujitsu, tapoeira, I tried everything. I was always if like someone that was doing something, I was like, Oh, I wanna try that. I didn't care. If it was dangerous, ah, oh, I went to that edge as much no. <laughs> no pun intended, but I, I pushed I pushed the limit as much as possible. Like, you know that's why I think part of why I just accepted this was it was kind of overdue. Like I was like so many times I fell, so many times I've, I've hit my head or something. Uh, you know scrambling up a, a climb without ropes, thinking like oh let me just do this real quick. You know it, it could have happened a long time ago. But but here's the thing, it didn't. It happened in the mid the midway of your functioning active life. So at 34, I got an opportunity to live a great, a great ex experience, great life, uh, adventurous life, and then now I get to live another one from a wheelchair. So I get to live two lives, and you know, people think, oh, it's poor wheelchair. It's like you gotta look at things in a happy way. You gotta look at things like, who gets to do that? Now I get to challenge myself, just like you said. I said, here's the list of the things I did before. Let's start crossing these off. I still rock on. Can't do parkour yet, but that's what skate park wheelchair on basically is. Um, and I'm definitely what that's my goal is to get one of those wheelchairs because I'll because when I get back to California, I'm getting all the skate parks. And again, I'm pretty I'll push it to the limit, but responsibly. I don't want any more injuries. But I still do. I still train jujitsu. I recently got my brown belt this year, uh, in February. So I've been training jujitsu for over ten years. Uh, I started on my feet. I had my blue belt uh, when I fell, so I understood the fundamentals, and I just kept kept going. It took me it took me a good five years for my body to catch up to my mind because I was it was hard. Like I said, I was always in I was never in my chair, so I never had chair standing. You know, and it's something that if you're in a wheelchair and you're not moving a lot. You'll see, I'm sure if you start following me and stuff, you'll see what I've been to up to and you'll see all of the path and everything I've done. But it's all was at a, as a, at a price of not having my chair standing up. I was always on the mats but where I should have been out there doing. I never got physical therapy. So if you're getting physical therapy, take it serious and, and really do it because of eight years without physical therapy, I'm just now trying to get back. I still don't have good chairs right now. So I, first thing, if you're in a wheelchair, and you're especially if you're new to your injury, practice in your chair. Just push every day at least, even if it's just to the end of the driveway and back, push. Push until you can go to the end of the street because I'm doing that now and it's painful. So it's better to gradually build it. Um, that's, that's the first advice I can give anybody. All right, now let's talk for a minute. Um, you said if you know if they follow you, where where can if they want to if they want to follow you, see what you're doing or whatnot? So you have a a, a public Facebook page? Yeah, I have a, a Facebook page, uh, Maximiliano Yo. It's just my name. I'll I'll, I'll link to all of these things down in the description. And um, all right now, I have a YouTube channel, but it's a jujitsu channel. It's a, it's for it's promoting jujitsu. Basically, there's some competitions, people with limitations competing. There's a lot of instructionals because I'm trying to educate people on how to teach uh, people with limitations, also how to um, think outside the box and have an imagination. But Neil's been helping me uh, figure out the process of, of basically what he's doing so I can start having a YouTube channel so people can follow and, and actually start posting my whole spectrum of my trip rather than just the jiu-jitsu side. So that's going to be coming
coming soon, and it should be it should be named without limitations because it's jujitsu without limitations, exploring, cooking, and um, remodeling without limitations are the four uh, avenues that I, I uh, plan to explore. So when that when that becomes available, maybe we can get him to start it before I actually publish this episode. Um, yeah, there won't be much content. Actually, this will probably be different. Or, or we'll get some, I'll get some few videos on there. So just bear with me, uh, follow it, stay, stay there, and, and just trust I'll start filling it up. Trust me. Yep. All right, guys. Well, Max, buddy, as always, good to see you. Man, I really appreciate your help this week. It was a good week of training. You got to work on the car. You got to uh, hang out. Had some good dinners in there. And yeah, we got some got some good food. Got the van running. I I told you guys I wouldn't bring in tools, and I then I had to go buy tools. Just, <laughs> but you know what? Max needed the help, and I could give it to him. So, uh, uh, so that's awesome. Um, we're going to uh, end it right here because we have other awesome things we're going to do before I leave North Carolina. Thank you guys so much for watching today. Uh, I hope that you enjoyed getting to meet Max and Chill Dog and kind of take a little look at the van. And hopefully you guys will follow along with him. Max is, is a pretty cool guy. Thank you. Mo most of the time. Most of the time he's a cool guy. Except when I'm, <laughs> except when I'm putting the pressure in the GPS. Yeah. <laughs> so, uh, uh, you know, if you guys want to support No Legs No Problem TV, all you have to do is like, share, and subscribe. If you would like to get a shirt, a hat, stickers, what have you, buy me a coffee. There's links down below for all that. There will also be links to all of Max's stuff down below. So go check him out. Give him a like and tell him that I sent you. And uh, just, you know, remember guys, it's life is life. Enjoy life whether you're on prosthetics in a chair or, you know, you just got a bad back or, or whatever it is, you know. You, you can still enjoy life. I do every day. Max does every day. Absolutely. So uh, don't forget, guys, even if you have legs, but you really can't move them, no legs, no problem.